Hey, everybody. Come on in the room. Go. I'm mob into a little Donnie McClurkin. Pleasures, Lord. See, we don't ever know the words. E. I made up my life. Who we got in here? I'm so excited. Hey, Chuck. How are you, buddy? I got five of y'all. You guys know my, um, I always see things so late. <laughs> Yay, Brian. Welcome. We're going to have a good show today. Here we go. Say <laughs> What y'all know about the shoulder action for Jesus? <laughs> we're trying to get, uh, you know, the required amount of folks in here. Chuck, we're good. We're good. You know, just hanging on in there. Making it. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Shannon. We need to get our girls together. I feel like we need to let them get together and just run themselves ragged. And then we can go to sleep. Feels like an idea to me. <laughs> right. Watch that dancing now. I had a little, it was a salvation shrug, see? It wasn't even no, nothing on the bottom. It was all up here. What are you doing? So sweet. Hi, Dad. Granddaddy's here on the phone. You got crumbs on the face. Oh, yeah. Say hi to Granddaddy. Hi, Granddaddy. Hi, Grandmama. <laughs> They're both watching. Okay, go sit down. All right, go sit down. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> just the one shoulder, Shannon. Just. In college, our dumb butts used to ask, um, if you could only dance with one body, body part, what would you dance with? And mine was my shoulder. I just feel like I can be really ex expressive with the shoulder. <laughs> Hi, Megan. Grandmommy says hi, Yaya. Listen. Oh, granddaddy said hi, baby. Y'all, I'm excited about our show today. Let me turn this down. She said hi back. Yaya's with us today. She's eating her lunch. She's having a Lunchable that comes with two Oreo cookies. So if she eats her lunch, then she gets what? Yeah, black cookies with icing, which are Oreos. And for the lay people. The Hi, ice, Mallory. The Hi, Court. Ice, huh? Which the icing is white. Yes, the icing is white. Indeed, indeed, indeed. All right, people. What is it? 304? We've got a lot to cover today. I um. First of all, I want to, at some point, let you know that I am really proud of my um, eyeshadow. Not be well. One, it's pretty. Two, it matches my Pac-Man pajama pants. Okay, so I'm feeling like I've accessorized. So I just wanted to share that with you. At some point, I will highlight so you can see just how well this blue goes with the blue of these Pac-Man pants. You got it. You know what I'm saying? I very rarely have a reason to get dressed up. So I got kind of dressed up, but my face is beat. To match my Pac-Man pants. That is top-notch <laughs> television. <laughs> okay, people. So I asked you wonderful folks um, to weigh in on some stuff. Wait, 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 Jesus. Uh, Lord, I started. Stop it. Get off me. <laughs> Yasmin Rose. No, 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 no. Go, go to. Go potty. If you need to do that, you don't do that here. She, I don't know if you heard that, but she announced that she needed to pass gas and then did. So, we're a class did, act over here. Did you say ew? Did you just say ew? Just say ew. Did those guys said ew? Yeah, they probably did. If Yeah, okay. No more talking or pooting. Okay, so I asked... Um, no more talking. Now she's quoting The Little Mermaid. She said, no more talking, singing, zip. All right, so 
excuse all of this. Wait, that, 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 that. Um, I've gotten so many questions recently about what can be done and um, just from white friends who wanted to know how they can help or what can they learn or... <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, God. Um, wanted to know, you know, what, what, what could they possibly do? Who is this? Hi, Tori. Hi, Travion. I'm, um, make sure you hit me up. I'm so excited to see you this weekend. So what I wanted to do, I started this whole series called Ask Me Anything. And I don't know how long we're going to ride this out, but it'll probably be, uh-uh. It'll probably be a few weeks because there's so many questions that have come in. And honestly, the conversation is ongoing. So, um, I had... Two questions set. Please don't do that. I had two questions set and ready to answer. And then I got another one in and I snuck a third question in at the last minute. And honestly, I'm, I've been so pleased reading all of the comments because um, we're not, it's not one stop shopping. All of us feel differently about different matters. There is a lot on which we agree. Um, but there's, you know, it's, it's good to get several perspectives and so um i thank all my poc peeps my, my persons of color uh yeah i think that's what that would be um for for one being so great gracious and graceful with your answers and um two for chiming in and three for my white friends who have asked these hard questions i know it's not very easy being that vulnerable honestly um no one wants to be in a position where you just, you don't, you don't even know where to begin and you don't even know if the questions that you're asking are offensive, you know what I'm saying? So I really do appreciate you putting yourself out there um, so that we can get some healing and really address the issues that face us. Um, so I am grateful to all of you for that. Thank you. It is not, honestly, it's not easy on any side that you sit on. Um, yes, the... The inequities are, are, are huge. Yes, it is the um, black and brown communities that are being affected more than anybody else um, on these matters. But we got a lot of white folks who are great, great people who, it wasn't their intention, like they didn't set the, the system up, but they, they have benefit from the system. They have benefited from the system. And so it's hard to, um, it's hard to talk about sometimes, but I feel like, it's the only way we're going to really get some healing is to have the hard conversations. So thank you all for being here today. And thank you for, um, you know, being a part of the process. All right. So um, if you're just joining in and you don't know what I've done, I asked my friends who were non-POC, do not identify as a person of color, if they had any question that they could ask um, without, you know, fear of judgment or whatever, what would it be? And to send those to me. Um, and then I posted those and asked my persons of color friends to address them. And now we are going to get into it. Okay. So the first question we've got, stop it. Y'all, while you're listening, y'all pray for my baby now. Yeah. Okay. Question one. Hi, Lisi. I have a question for you. I have heard some people Hi, of color, Lisi. baby, sit down. I have heard some people of color say that they don't like to be asked about their life. Or story, no, sorry, their life story or stories of negative experiences that have happened to them. That non POC should do their own research Hi, about the racism that still exists today. I am definitely down with doing my own research, but also curious if this is an offensive question to ask POC about their experiences. I'm talking about if I know the person and if I have a relationship with them, not necessarily a stranger. From my perspective, it comes from a place of wanting to listen to the person and become more aware of situations that, as a non-POC, I might not even realize is happening. Anyway, I suppose a better way to phrase the question is, what is the best way to show our POC brothers and sisters that we want to hear them without causing further or offense or pain in the situation, as a well-meaning white person, as well-meaning white people can often do? Smile. Thanks for listening. Okay, so let's hit up question one. And um, though I might not see what you're saying 
in the moment, please feel free to comment and to to chime in because you all will see it and um, you know, we all will benefit from it in the end. So I'm just gonna read a couple of answers about question one first. Uh, my sweet friend, Jermaine Bo, he is a college buddy and I, um, of mine, and I think he's from, Jermaine, if you're here, I think you're Bahamian, right? I believe he's from the Bahamas. Um, he says, for question one, everyone has a different story shaped by their experiences because it is important to see people as an individual and not as a group. If you don't sit down, sit down and don't color your turkey. No, no, throw it away, get up and throw it away, but do not color your turkey. <laughs> Jermaine says, because it's important to see people as an individual and not as a group, I don't like stereotyping. I like a two-way, unforced conversation about life. <laughs> Y'all pray for me, because <laughs> my baby is mine. Um, my friend Cicely said to this question, if you are friends, listening is important. I think our stories come out as we live life. So letting it come naturally is great. Making <laughs> an appointment to talk, I mean, please no. Also timing. For me, when George Floyd was lynched by police, I was in no mood to even tell a white friend how I was doing, much less, oh, sorry, y'all, I can't read, how I was doing. Much like in any high stress situation, a loss or a loved one or a job or whatever, answering questions from a friend just isn't it, but being available is. I would ask your friends how they feel about you asking the questions and what their boundaries are, which I think is so, um, so, so real. Basic friendship rules apply to interracial relationships too. If I say I don't want to talk about it right now, just drop it. Maybe come back at another time. Truly, we all share our stories as we live them. Listen, you'll see, and read a book of you. I completely agree with that. I have several friends um, who, while in the course of doing life with me, were able to see things from my perspective. And very rarely did we just have a conversation about the matter by itself at first. Um, but then just by doing life with me and seeing how different things are happening to me that might not happen to them or just whatever, they were able to, you know, we were then able to talk about it um, because the relationship was there and we were kind of doing life together. So I think that's really, really real. And also, um, yeah, it's, you know, like when a friend is dealing with a trauma, um, you want to be a, a help to them, but it's awkward because you don't know what to say. Um, so like if, if someone has lost a loved one, you you find yourself in a very sensitive place of wanting to encourage them, but not overwhelm them. I feel like in, in this matter, especially when we're seeing things like um, George Floyd or Jacob Blake or whatever, the, no matter what your feelings are about the matter, if you see that your friend has been greatly affected, you would most likely come in um, tenderly. And I think that's kind of a, a good rule of thumb because everybody's going to respond to trauma a different way. My friend Brett says, I think some POCs are a little tired. They've shared their stories when asked, then are met with statements like, are you sure? But maybe it's in your head. <laughs> I don't know why I just gave it that voice, but y'all know. Uh, <laughs> that is true. I cannot tell you how hurtful it has been. Um, for folks to ask questions of me and then when I answer, put me in a position where I've got to defend my experience or my statement. Oh, that ain't cool. Um, so if you're going to ask the question, be willing to listen with some humility, I think. Um, because the answers aren't often comfortable and the lives we, that we live ain't comfortable. So, you know, everybody got to go low, meaning tread with humility, tread lightly. All right, let's see. You guys gave me some really, really great answers to this. Let me see. My sweet friend Courtney says, um, number one, be patient. Let your friend bring it up or ask them the same question you've asked Lisey. Does it offend you when people ask about your experiences? If they say no, then follow up well, with, well, I'm actually people. <laughs> um, are you willing to share with me? It is so important to always remember that it is an individual thing. We are all different people with different experiences. So don't assume that every POC feels the same way about being asked questions or sharing. 
Yeah. For every person who minds, there is another person who doesn't, especially if they have a relationship with you. That is so true. That is so, so true. Courtney, I'm truncating your answer because I want to make sure we get to all of the questions. Um, another friend said to this question, it's exhausting rehearsing the pain. It's almost like asking us to re-traumatize ourselves over and over for someone's listening enjoyment. In the same way you wouldn't want someone to prove or prove to you or recount the pain of an abuse, don't expect me to. I refer them to documentaries or YouTube. History is replete with instances of racial discrimination that they can indulge in if they choose. Yeah. Yeah. Facts on facts on facts. Um, he goes on to mention Jane Elliott. Listen, if you're not familiar with Jane Elliott, I feel like more black folks are familiar with Jane Elliott than any of my white friends have been. Um, she's a, a wee little white lady who has been spitting knowledge. I mean, just flat out knowledge. Um, I believe she was a professor at an Ivy League school at one point. Um, I think I first, I might have first ran into Jane when I was a kid. She was on Donahue or something telling folks exactly <laughs> uh, the truth and dealing with matters of race um, with all kinds of just knowledge. Knowledge on knowledge on knowledge. If you look up Jane Elliott, um, most likely you would find her immediately. Jane Elliott. What's the, there's another Jane that was famous for dealing with gorillas. It's not her. Who was that Jane? Jane Seymour? Mm, I don't know. Jane Elliott is a tiny little white lady with a very short uh, haircut. And I think she's got all white or gray hair. Check her out. She's going to tell you the truth. Um, she's going to tell you just literally from the time the colonies were founded until current day. She is just a very knowledgeable source. Um, and she minces no words. So be prepared. Be prepared. All right. Yasmin Rose, I love you. Hush. Thank you. Okay, question number two. Number two, y'all heard that flip? That's placement, y'all. I be singing. <laughs> question number two. As a what? Do you want to go upstairs? I'm going to tell everybody goodbye? All right, go, 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 or hush. Um, as a white woman, am I welcome at a predominantly black church? I have always loved the liveliness and soul that black preacher and worship brings. Okay, so here's what you guys had to say about that. I will say, I just had a conversation with my friend um, Chance. He checked out a black church in his neighborhood and was not welcomed. And it hurt my heart. It really, truly did. Um, I understand the the skeptic nature of some black congregations. Um, but you know, the whole goal is that all are welcome in the house of the Lord. Like that's, that's what we're reaching for. But I have to be honest and say that is especially in the light of what's that jerk Dylan, um, Dylan Roof, Dylan, whatever the baby, the boy, the man who walked into the church in South Carolina and shot nine folks dead at a black church during Bible study that um that added just more to years and years and years of distrust um the black church has been a haven a, a safe place for for the community and so a lot of times people would be um skeptical and want to know what are you doing there <laughs> but in general i would say that black folks love it when folks who um aren't you know, black, come in and join a worship experience. Um, nobody wants to be watched. Nobody wants to be watched and like, you know, made fun of or, you know, the worship is not for your entertainment. I've, I've saw some, I've seen some comments say, <clears throat> but it is uh, definitely a different worship experience and we love it to share with people who don't look like us. So I'm gonna read some comments. <laughs> Stephanie, one of my roomies from college, said, yes, you are so welcome to a black church. We love having white people. Mainly for me, it's because I love to see their reactions to the different things that happen in the service. Uh, <laughs> that is true. Listen, it is so funny. If you've ever gone to a black funeral and you are white, it is so funny watching white folks respond to 
what happens in black funerals sometimes. It is my, it's one of my favorite things on earth because I was with a friend who literally jumped one time <laughs> because we were at a funeral and somebody got touched and yelled out, oh, thank you, like out of nowhere, a dead silence. And when I tell you my friend jumped about three inches up off her seat, <laughs> blessed me. Shannon says, go into a black church, go to several until you find your home. There's nothing else like it. And everyone is welcome to that joy. It's so good. That's so good. You said joy. That reminded me of that scene from um, Coming to America. <laughs> when they, you know, with the Randy Watson. When they were like, say joy, joy. And Hakeem and them, being from Africa, had not been in a black church experience. And they were like, joy. And Hakeem was like, joy. <laughs> That's what that made me think of. And then the lady behind her was like, amen, amen, brother. Okay, sorry. I'm going in. Uh, maybe watch Coming to America. <laughs> okay, question two. My uh, Brett says, honestly, some black churches are a little suspicious of whites. This isn't a majority of them. It might be good to go with a friend. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Let us see, let us see. Oh, somebody had made a really great comment. Hmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm scrolling. Courtney says, yes, you are always welcome, but remember every church is different. And unfortunately, some churches are less welcoming than others. And if you find yourself feeling unwelcome, it's most li it, mo <laughs> it most likely would have nothing to do with you being white and everything to do with that individual church's culture on how they treat guests. Keep visiting different ones if you're feeling unwelcome at a church. I know you would always be welcome and embraced at my church. That's so true. Honestly, I've spent so much time in white churches. Um, and it was a big, big adjustment for me. Like my family came up apostolic and charismatic and Pentecostal. Um, in majority black churches, we might have had a uh, white. <laughs> Shelly, are you on here? Shelly would be the white that was at the church I grew up in. Um and then when we made the switch looking for other churches, we went through several and we were not always very welcomed. You can sometimes just feel <sighs> tension and that sucked. It really did suck. Um, and even in the church that we, my parents ended up being at for a long while and my dad ended up being on staff there. At first it was, it was an interesting adjustment. Um, but eventually we were we became very, very loved congregants at that church and we served there um, and loved everyone there. And these people are still a part of our lives. So if you are willing to be uncomfortable and be in a space um, that you're, that no one looks like you, welcome to our world. And please, I would love for you. I feel like everybody should have an experience in cultures outside of their own. Um, my, my sister Paige, she is Jewish. We have been with her in, in the synagogue, um, gone to worship with Catholic friends. Um, just, I think we only grow by exposing ourselves to things that we are not comfortable with and things that we didn't grow up with. So go to your black church somewhere, ask a friend where they go, maybe see if, that you can sit with them so that you don't feel so alone. Or go by yourself, either way. And if you are um, met with a little bit of tension, that's not a reflection of the entire black church culture. So just go until you find one that's like, yeah, 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 this is home. Gosh, we only have six more minutes left and we have one more question. Let's see, okay. The final question Okay, so for me, who at almost 60 years old from Alabama realized I have missed out on so much black history, what can I do to better understand and be proactive in the discussion of racial injustice? Even though I grew up with people of color and one of my best friends was black, I had no exposure to historical events besides movies that showed slaves watched the whole miniseries Roots and was so taken aback by the cruelty. And then movies taking place in the South before and during the 60s. It amazed me 
that anyone could treat another human being that way. But I feel like me feeling bad for what happened is just not enough because now I realize what makes me uncomfortable is a tiny minuscule fraction of what black people have actually had to live out. And what's even worse is my denomination has remained quiet and was so involved in much of that abuse. So as an independent believing in Jesus person, what can I do so that people of color know that I am sorry and am wanting to bridge the gap? I would say that, um, there's an auntie self. That's remarkable. Can you walk over here and sit down and be quiet? Thank you. I would say that um, saying that you're sorry is important and um, I think it probably would feel maybe better for you than it might be for the person you're saying it to, but I get the sentiment. Um, it feels a little awkward for me when, when white folks apologize because I know good and well you didn't do anything, um, but that you do benefit from the way that this country was founded and the systemic racism that exists. So it's a little bit awkward sometimes because it's, what do I say to your apology? Like, thank you. <laughs> um, but I also know that a lot of times when folks are apologizing like that, it is very well intentioned. And so I will say thank you. It just feels a little bit weird because I'm like, I know you didn't do anything. Um, but I will say that what this whole season has done is like rustled up emotion from everybody. And um, folks are now, white folks are now being made more and more aware of the differences and that does not feel good for either side. So I really do appreciate um, the sentiment. I really, I really do. But don't be surprised if you say I'm sorry to someone and they don't really know how to respond. It's not um, because they're being mean. It's just we are so used to bearing this burden alone, or quietly, or just you know in our own community that we don't really know exactly what to say sometimes when, when you say that, but I do really appreciate that. Okay, so let's get into some of these answers. <laughs> letter, not letter, Lord. Question three. Um, Courtney says, I get why it may be important for you. No, I get why it may be important to you to let people know you're sorry, but let me say this. It can't be your primary motivation. I think any reasonable person, reasonable person, especially a true believer, would want to distance themselves from those who committed atrocious acts against or supported horrible injustices towards blacks historically. However, I would first encourage you to resist the temptation to want to be excluded from the guilty just because you don't want to be considered guilty. The best motive to prioritize is your de desire to learn for the sake of understanding and reconciling without it mattering what others, thinks, what others think of you. When you know you have done the work of seeking the truth, it doesn't matter what others, thinks, what others think. Y'all, I'm so sorry. I'm not reading well. Um, my attention is pulled every which way and I'm so sorry for that. Um, what matters most is how, you, how your mind has been changed and renewed. Boom. What matters most is how your mind has been changed and renewed. That's good stuff. There are lots of books and resources, and it's never too late to begin learning. Search Google, YouTube, and li library resources. Find a Black or African American museum in or near your area and begin going in person or online. Since George Floyd's death, all of the video streaming services have curated playlists of movies and documentaries. Goodreads has curated a book list, or you can Google that too. Yeah, one way you can bridge the gap is inviting others on the journey with you to learn and to hold you accountable, like a book study, town hall talk, prayer and discussion. I love that, I love that. Yeah, I love that. Um, Grand, yeah, grandmommy, she wishes she could be at y'all's house and riding a bike, I think she said. Um, I like that, Courtney. Um, I have a friend who, no, hush. I have a friend who was a pastor's wife. Um, they're white. 
and they started a group at church um, where they were intentionally doing book club type things or having discussions amongst themselves. Um, and I really, really dug that. I cannot think of one white church I've been involved in um, that has taken it that seriously. I loved that. My church, Christ Church Nashville, is also very, very intentional about bridging the gap and um, providing a means for their for our congregants to learn. I love that. I really, really, truly love that. Um, these documentaries that are on, there's so many that are on Netflix. They're literally all the this, all this, uh, streaming services have them. But um, there's several on Netflix that I really, really liked. One being, I think it's called 13, either 13 or the 13th. It's about the 13th Amendment. Um, yeah, you literally can look on any of these streaming services and they have a Black Lives Matter collection. Um, so check those out. I also want to say, because you'll see BLM collection, um, do not be put off by the BLM. I know that there is much concern about the Marxists in the Black Lives Matter organization. For 90% of us, Black Lives Matter is a statement, and that is what we are talking about. We are not necessarily backing the organization. However, the, the organization has done a lot of really good work and has pushed these issues to the forefront, so you'll see them intertwined. Don't be put off by three letters. Um, if you're willing to learn and you're willing to do the work and you're willing to... Um, dig in. The information is there for you, but you're going to, it's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be uncomfortable. So, you know, dig in, just dig in. We are, it's at 332. Should I go a little longer? Or should I shut up? What y'all want me to do? Shut up. Oh, who are you talking to? <laughs> y'all, this might be my last show. Okay, let's see what else my friends have said. I think I'm going to go to 345. Brian says go on. Yes, Black Lives Matter too. Also, additionally, thank you, Mom. Dre, keep going. All right, I'm going to keep going. Um, Let's see. For question three, uh, Kim Moon says, you need to make a financial investment. Currency and black pain go hand in hand. Racial capitalism and brown bodies are what fueled the wealth of the country and still does. From the start of slavery, Jim Crow, housing, education, and the prison, prison system. If you feel bad, you need to work with your elected officials to push for reparations and start giving black family school, schools, organizations, single moms, moms, whatever, some money. Leave your inheritance to black organizations. Pay for black kids' tuition. Feelings don't make nearly the difference as as currency. Okay. Put your money where your mouth is. I heard that. Sorry, I'm getting all jumbled here. I want to make sure that I'm answering the right question with the right comment. Um, mm, yeah, I think that might be all the answers we have on three. Oh, nope. My friend said, educate yourself. Number three, educate yourself. It's that simple. Most of us black people were not taught our history either. It's very true. We are taught a very limited scope of black history. In school, we're going to hear a lot about slavery. We're going to get a little piece of the civil war move. I mean, no, civil rights movement. Um, in that, we're going to get a lot about Martin Luther King and um, Rosa Parks, who should be celebrated. A little piece of Harriet Tubman might hear about Sojourner Truth. You're going to hear bad, bad stuff about Malcolm X, um, but you really need to educate yourself on him. Um, so we do a lot of self-educating within our communities because we have to. Um, I, I went to a church. I sang at a church in Ar Arkansas. Arkansas is where the whole Walmart organization started, right? Is that, I want to say it is. And I had a conversation with um, a pastor's wife there who did a lot of um, 
research. I can't remember what her degree was in, but she did a lot of research about um, Confederate memorials and like just post-Civil War history. And um, she explained to me, which I don't think I realized, I was aware, but I don't think I realized that um, most of the books that the school children were given in the South and probably all of America, but definitely in the South, history books and all of that, that they were giving to our black children came from the daughters of the Confederacy or the daughters of the American Revolution. So you can imagine then that what we have been taught has not been um, created with our best interest in mind or even the entire truth or in some cases the truth at all. So we have always had to seek knowledge for ourselves. We come from kings and queens and royalty. We barely ever hear about the, the great uh, royal kingdoms that we came from and, and, and our actual making. Um, they want to whitewash everything. That's why you see Cleopatra being played by white women. <laughs> Um, that's why I got an a F or a D on a paper one time for a black history assignment where I wrote about the great feats that the Egyptians had um, mathematically and in science. And my teacher wanted me to write it over again because he said that the, they were white. You, my teacher, my history teacher wanted to fail me on a paper because I called Egyptians African, thusly black. So we have had to do a lot of self-educating. You will have to do the same. Um, the information is definitely out there from credible sources. So please do not be afraid. And honestly, I think that it might be, it might feel safer to do some of this research for yourself at home than to always be looking out or talking to others about it. Maybe do some of that research on your own and then bring some of that, any questions that you might have to your friends um, or to safe places like this because this is what we're here for. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Any more, any more, any more? I cannot wait to see what you guys are saying in the comments. Um, somebody said, they, oh, these little gnats, y'all. A Gannette. Um, someone thanked me for this for this thread. Thank you. you. Thank you for for being a part of it all. I think that's all I saw on number three. At any rate, it's all that my I'm able to scroll and see. So um, I'll let you guys go. It's three thirty eight. I'll let you guys go. Um, keep this keep this going. You know, what I mean, the fact that you guys, there's been somewhere between 27 and 30 of us um, that have stayed engaged during this whole conversation lets us know that there's a lot that we have to talk about. And honestly, it's not easy and it does not feel good. But this is this is how um, progress is made, honestly. And it's very easy to to polarize and for everybody to go to their own corner. Um, that's why it made me so happy when my friend was asking about going to a black church because, um, as Malcolm X said, Sundays at noon are the most segregated day of the week and it shouldn't be, you know, but we go where we're comfortable. And so we don't often have the time or the, the chance to ask the hard questions or to converse with folks who don't look like us and don't feel like us, don't vote like us. Um, but it's very, very necessary. So thank you so much for being with me. And I look forward to next week's show. We're going to keep this whole situation going. Ask me anything. Ask us anything. Um, and also, I'm going to add to that. Ask about your um, questions about race and all of that stuff. But I'm going to add a little piece to where you can ask me anything. September the 10th, which is next Thursday, is my 40th birthday. And so I would like to uh, celebrate with you guys. And I get all kinds of funny questions about myself and just where I came from in my whole life. So if you've got questions that you want to ask me about my crazy life, my crazy 40 years to this point, uh, ask me those too. So also, if you have not subscribed, subscribed yet, please.
do it. I was really, really, really hoping to hit a thousand subscribers by my birthday. You guys have helped me get over the halfway point. I think last night I checked, it was like 516 people. That is so excellent. Um, so keep on subscribing, keep on checking in, keep those questions coming. I love you so, so, so very much. Oh, I forgot to show you how my pants and my eyes match, but I'm gonna I'm take a picture. It's probably a little more appropriate that I do that than hoist my leg up by my eye, which I can do because I'm flexible. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys so very much. Have a Yaya says bye. Have a good rest of your week. And that is what's going down. I missed you guys. With Lacey Brown. Bye.